trying to from the dust clouds that are coming. If you could see behind me this a moment ago, you could see all the way through. But from that last explosion that Jeff Rawson was telling us about, it is now again dark. It was strangely and eerily calm here in the financial district because everything's been evacuated. Of course, now that calm is being punctuated again by emergency units ferrying people back from the scene. They are still pulling the injured out from the rubble. These are the latest numbers from Beekman Hospital. 3,300 casualties. 20% of those are critical. Three, unfortunately, dead on arrival. 20% critical. They are seeing several amputees. They treated several firefighters and several, <coughs> excuse me, several emergency workers at the hospital. And we also talked to some people that were near the hospital, Beekman downtown, and captured some amateur videotape of what it looked like earlier this morning. This amateur video taken from the 20th floor of Beekman Towers shows the second plane practically flying through World Trade Tower number two. Oh my God! Ah! From the ground, the injured running from the scene, bleeding and choking on dust and debris, were barely out of harm's way when the buildings began collapsing, obliterating any light and sending a third and fourth wave of panic through the streets. These women made it all the way from the 50th it. floor in the World Trade Tower. We ran down the steps to the lobby. There was no lobby. Everything was torn up. My boss ran out of the office. He said one thing, run. Everybody just ran. And we ran down the stairs. They told us to come back up the stairs. And we were like, come back up the stairs. Are you crazy? So we continued down the stairs. We came outside in the lobby. There was no lobby. The lobby was totally gone. Did you see other people? People. There was a woman named her face blown off. Emergency units brought the wounded and dying to one of the closest hospitals, NYU downtown, which implemented disaster operation drills, setting up triage on the sidewalk to help the most serious injured while inside the hallways even the cafeterias were being utilized as emergency areas we've been faced with all sorts of injuries neurosurgical orthopedic general surgery there are patients in our OR patients in our ICUs we're fully staffed and we are managing quite well with the help of a lot of the New York community anybody who's stable is being transferred uptown to hospitals that are waiting multiple traumas burns um, people crushed by rubble a lot of inhalation injury a lot of of asthmatics, but the worst casualties have been both from flying objects and from being crushed under the rubble. And they still do not know how many people are trapped under the rubble. They are bringing people to Beekman, and there was just some more activity here as, as the ambulances came up and down the street after that other tower came down. There were some information from firefighters here that they were building for three hours today a trauma center inside the transportation building when they started getting warnings to take everything down and evacuate because they were worried about World Trade Tower number seven coming down. That is the situation, what we have right here. It looks like a ghost town. There are um, federal agents with guns standing outside the federal buildings, clearing people out. The only thing left in the street are people's shoes as they ran out of their shoes to escape the firebombs and the explosions. We are live in the financial district. I'm Nina Pineda, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Really horrible day in New York City. Thank you, Nina. As we mentioned, though, New York was not alone in the attacks today. A plane crashed into the Pentagon in northern Virginia, forcing the evacuation of all government buildings in Washington, D.C. Andy Field is in Washington with the late details for us. Chaos on the ground, the sky, and inside the nation's military headquarters, an instant after a plane snapped light poles on a suicide mission, driving straight through the Pentagon's five fortified corridors. It came streaking down and hit, and it hit short. Just, it didn't go into the top of the Pentagon. It came like in short, and then it, it, everything sprayed up, like a fireball sprayed up on the wall. I just know that we got out where we could get out. It was so hot everywhere else, I couldn't tell you. And it was over on that side. It's, uh, this is, this is uncaused. And the worst part about it is, there ain't nobody to fight. The Pentagon attack paralyzed most of official Washington. Across the Potomac River, police evacuated the White House and raced congressional leaders to a secure location. The president, in Florida visiting an elementary school, appeared stricken when he got the news. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. Back in Washington, the mayor declaring a state of emergency. Virtually all office workers sent home early. The nation's museums closed. Military jets patrolling what they hoped 
would not become a war zone. On Let Capitol Hill, say, furious members of Congress exploded in rage. Infamy. This is a tragedy in that 10,000 Americans or more have died, but it's a day of disgrace. Those people, those senior executives that we've been paying in our national security apparatus to protect the American people have utterly failed. This is a catastrophic failure of American intelligence, and tens of thousands of Americans have paid the price. There are conflicting FBI source reports on what warning U.S. intelligence had before the attack. The Capitol adjourned early and could stay closed for security. Many congressmen think that's a bad idea. They say they did not close the Capitol during the War of 1812 or the Civil War. They shouldn't close it now. We are ready, willing, and able to re engage the Senate's business, the House business, and to demonstrate to the world that these incidences cannot in any way fundamentally alter the strength of this great nation. Mrs. Bush appeared briefly on Capitol Hill at a hearing canceled by the attack. Our hearts and our prayers go out to the victims of this act of terrorism and that uh, our support goes to the rescue workers um, and all of our prayers are with everyone there. All right, Jeff Rawson, Lower Manhattan, has an update for us. Jeff. And Roz, last time we spoke, there was a, a collapse, a building collapse. We understand now it was World Trade Center, building number seven. We were being evacuated live on television. And we want to let you know, first of all, everyone in our crew is okay. Everyone in the area here is okay. You can look at our live truck. That's where we had to abandon it, just down the street, as we broadcast these live pictures. And beyond that, you can see the smoke billowing. Certainly there was smoke before because that building was on fire. But since the collapse, we could literally see the smoke, the dark cloud of smoke and dust coming down the corridor of buildings down Church Street toward us. At that very same moment, police started evacuating everybody. And this is where we all are right now evacuated back here to Duane Street at church and you can see all these people were about a block up with us but when that building collapsed you heard another tremble kind of like this morning when those uh, two planes went into it and then the subsequent building collapses this sounded a lot like that and then all of a sudden we looked over and we saw the smoke coming at us right now we can tell you that the paramedics the fire officials all emergency workers trying to do a head count trying to figure out if everyone inside that building fighting that fire is okay we will certainly bring that information to you as we get it live in lower manhattan jeff ross and abc7 eyewitness news now just before this all happened before the first tower came down we got a chance to talk to one man who got away just in the nick of time uh there was a big impact with some noise the floor shook and we all evacuated what floor were you on 56. that was in the According to one of those towers, that was below where the explosion took place. We were below the explosion. I believe it was at 78 on uh, Tower 1. What did you feel? More than the last one. Uh, significantly more than the last one, but it only lasted 10 seconds. You were actually here during the World Trade Center bombing? Yes. You remember that? Yes. In comparison, you're saying was... This is, seems a good deal worse. What's your name? Larry Tondel. Spell your last name. T-O-N-D-E-L. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. In the neighborhood closest to the World Trade Center, it is an eerie sight, the financial district of virtual ghost town. Already sanitation crews are moving in to clear away our changed skyline. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. William French of Linden, New Jersey was coming up the PAP train escalator to go to work when the first plane hit. He got out in time, but his world changed forever. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same for me. Across the city, everyone gathered around TVs and radios for the latest news. Eddie Johnson watched from where he works, a parking garage on Leonard Street in the village. It's terrible. It's terrible. I never thought this would happen. I watched the building being built. I see them coming down like that, and all the people running from this area. It's terrible. And a few blocks farther north, as smoke still billowed, a small crowd gathered inside Puffy's Tavern on Hudson Street, which opened back in 1923. Neighbors peered inside to look at the latest on TV. Here, these New Yorkers spoke of loss and sadness and anger. First was fear. It was like, wow, it actually happened. Second is pure rage. I just can't believe they did it. This is like, this is like Pearl Harbor. I love this city. I love the city. And for them to just, I feel a little bit angry that, that those towers are not there anymore. That I'm, I, when I go out to my balcony, I always, that's my front lawn, the world trade, that not to see it there. I'm going to feel a little bit angry.